children we shall get into the world of statistics we begin our study of statistics with meaning of basic terminologies and then we proceed to study about frequency distribution table for ungrouped data and then for grouped data for both inclusive and exclusive types of distribution we next proceed to understand about graphical representation of statistical information through histograms we conclude our study of statistics with measures of central tendencies like mean median and mode for both ungrouped and grouped data children we shall know in detail about the contributions made by some people about uh, statistics now chandragupta maurya who lived between 324 bc to 300 bc he in his ruling collected data with regard to birth and deaths raja todarmal he introduced land and agricultural statistics look at these two western mathematicians laplace and gauss laplace lived between 1749 ad to 1827 ad and gauss who lived between 1777 ad to 1855 ad they introduced fundamental ideas of statistics look about another western mathematician john grant who lived between 1620 ad to 1674 ad he collected the data and processed the same this was the beginning of statistics children look at the information published in newspapers and magazines this information in the form of numerical figures is known as observation their statistical observation is a collection of numerical entries do you remember that your teacher has given each one of you an information sheet here is one such information sheet it is called the data card can you see the information about one student by name vinod yes look at the data card date is mentioned date 31 12 2000 name of the student vinod k class and section 9a his date of birth yes 15 9 age 14 years 3 months his height 152 cm his weight 40.2 kg his performance grade in previous exam b grade children now we shall get into organization of data the numerical facts about objects or events are called raw data simply collecting information about height weight marks etc do not give much information as it is hence they are to be organized data can be organized in the following ways the organization of the data is number 1 serial order or alphabetical order second one ascending order third one descending order children here is an example arrange the following scores in ascending order of magnitude 81 47 64 30 15 75 90 55 procedure we are arranging the numbers in ascending order ascending means from smaller magnitude to larger magnitude 15 30 
81 and 90. Supposing if I arrange the same numbers in descending order, yes, from larger magnitude to smaller magnitude, yes, the same thing is to be reversed. That is 90, 81, 75, 64, 55, 47, 30 and 50. Children, now we shall get into frequency distribution table. For this, we shall take up an activity. Marks obtained by 24 students of 8th A in a unit test in mathematics is given below. Enter them in a tabular column. So these are the marks obtained by how many students? 24 students. Yes, now we have to enter all these marks in tabular column. Children, here is an activity. In this, the procedure to condense the observations in the form of a table. Make groups of two among yourselves. From each group, one will read the marks one by one and another will enter the mark by putting a tally mark. Are you ready with these three columns? That is marks, tally marks, Total of tally marks, that is nothing but frequency. Okay. Write all the marks one below the other in ascending order in a column meant for marks. That is 7, 8, 12, 15, 18, 20. Okay. Now we shall begin. When one reads a mark, the other will put a vertical line. It is called tally mark. Under tally marks, against each score that is red, Continue this till all the observations are read. To make counting fast, make bunches of 5 by putting the 5th mark across the 4 vertical lines. Now, one should read 15. Where does it lie? Yes, it comes under 4th row. Put a tally in 15, under 15 marks. Next is 18. So, where we have to put the tally? Yes, under 18. Next is 7. So put a tally under 7. Next is 20. Put a tally under 20. So go on doing like this. If there are 4 and the next 5th mark will be a line which crosses all these 4 lines. Find the sum of tally marks and enter it in the last column. You found that total of tally marks are as follows. For mark 7, total tally marks will be 3. And similarly, it is 3, 4, 3, 5, 6 respectively for the remaining marks. Now we shall take the total of all this now. Now the total frequency is 24. Do you know the name for this kind of arrangement of data? Yes, it is. Frequency distribution table. The tabular arrangement of scores is called the frequency distribution table. Now we shall get into frequency distribution table for group data. When the observations are large, it is convenient to make small groups and arrange them in a frequency distribution table. Example, prepare a frequency distribution table for the scores given below. Look at all these scores. For these scores, we have to write a frequency distribution table. And we call this as group data. Children, here is an example. Now the scores are being given randomly. We have to Arrange all these scores in the frequency distribution table and we should form a group of data. To do this, step 1, we have to find out the range. What is range? You are exactly correct. It is the difference between highest score and the lowest score. Therefore, 
R is equal to H minus L. H is the highest score. It is 59 among these scores. Look at the data. What is the lowest score? Right, L is equal to 10. Therefore, what is range? You are right, 59 minus 10, that is equal to 49. In the next step, step 2, let us take the size of the class interval or the class size B10. Then, approximately, we shall find out the number of classes. For that, we shall take range divided by class size. Range is 49, the class size is 10. It is approximately 5. Now we shall form the table. We have taken the size of the class interval or class size will be 10. Therefore, we shall start from the lowest score 10. So the next 10 scores will be between 10 and 19. In the same way, the next class interval will be Yes, 20 to 29. Next, we can say easily, it is 30 to 39. What will be the next class interval? You are exactly right, 40 to 49. Yes, sir, what is the last class interval? 50 to 59. Shall we go to 60 to 69? Yes, it is not necessary because the highest score itself is 59. So, all the scores will lie only between these. Now, we shall take the tally. Children, you know already to take the tally. Now, one will tell the scores one by one. Another student will help to write the tally. The first number is 42. Where does this score 42 lie? You are right. It lies between 40 and 49. Therefore, I must put a tally mark in the tally marks column, a vertical line. The next score will be 22. You are right, it lies between 20 and 29. So I have to put a tally mark in the tally marks column. Yes, between 20 to 29. Next score will be 55. Where do you put the tally mark? You are exactly right. That is between 50 and 59. You follow the same procedure. And here is the tally that what we have made. If the marks exceeds 4, the fifth tally mark should be a crossed line as shown here. Continue the same procedure. Yes, you will get all the tally marks. Now, we can calculate the frequency. How many students have scored between 10 to 19? Yes, 5 plus 3, 8. That we call it as frequency, F. In the same way, 20 to 29? 10 students have scored. Between 30 to 39, you are right, 8 students. Between 40 to 49, 8 students. Between 50 to 59, 6 members have scored. Yes, individually, we got the frequency now for each class interval. We shall take the total of all the frequency. The total frequency is termed as sigma f, which is nothing but capital N. It is equal to 40. This is the frequency distribution table we form for group data. Now we shall know about class size. Number of scores that class contains is known as class size or width. Whereas what do you mean by class interval or class it is nothing but group of observations. What do you mean by frequency? That is nothing but n. The number of observations which a class contains is known as class frequency and is denoted by f. The sum of all the frequencies is called total frequency that is denoted by capital N or sometimes it is denoted as sigma f. Now we shall know about class limit. The two ends of class interval are known as class limits. The smaller of the two ends is called lower class limit 
and the greater is called as upper class limit. For example, in between 10 to 19, that means 10 is the lower limit and 19 is the upper limit. Children, there are two types of grouped frequency distribution. Look at these class intervals. Yes, the tallies are done and there is ready-made frequency distribution table here. The class intervals and frequency are mentioned. Between 30 to 39, it is 2. The next class interval commences from 40 and ends in 49. Easily you can say the next class interval, it is 50 to 59. The next class interval will be 60 to 69. Look at the other class interval between 30 to 40 and next 40 repeats, 40 to 50. Yes, the upper limit once again repeats, that is 50 to 60, once again 60 to 70. What is the difference that you can make out between these two? You are exactly right. The upper limit of the each class interval repeats there. So, there are two types of class intervals. The first type is called as inclusive class interval, whereas the second type is called as exclusive class interval. In table, first both the lower limit and upper limit of each class interval are included in the class interval. In the table second, the upper limit of each class interval is excluded in that particular class interval, but is included in the next class interval. This is helpful in finding the size of the class interval. Look at this now. Two types of grouped frequency distribution under that. Here there is no overlapping. The scores are not continuous. In the second table, there is overlapping. The scores are continuous. One type, the first type is called as inclusive type, where the second type is called as exclusive type. Children, now in these two types of class intervals, that is inclusive and exclusive type of class intervals, we shall know how to find the class size. Yes, we shall take up the first class interval under inclusive class interval type, that is between 30 to 39, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. So, the size of the class interval will be 10. We are including both the lower limit as well as the upper limit to calculate the size of the class interval. Now, whereas the next one, we have to make use of the lower limit, whereas the upper limit is excluded. Therefore, it is called exclusive class interval. That is 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38 and 39, 40. We are excluding. 40 will be included to the next class interval. Therefore, 40, the upper limit is excluded in calculating the size of the class interval. But in both the cases, the size of the class interval remains same. But there is no change in the class size in both the types of grouping. Here is another example. Prepare a frequency distribution table for this course. The scores are given randomly like this. Yes, you know the procedure children. We shall get into the procedure and form the frequency distribution table. Take the class intervals as 10 to 20, 20 to 30, etc. from the frequency distribution table and answer the following. First one. What does the frequency corresponding to the class interval 20 to 30 indicate? Children, we shall get into the second question. In which class intervals are scores 10, 20 and 30 are included? Third question, find the range of the scores. Now we shall answer all these questions one by one.
Now here we shall form the frequency distribution table. What type of frequency distribution table we have made here? Yes, it is exclusive type. How do you know it is exclusive type? Yes, between 10 to 20, the upper limit once again repeats. That is 20 to 30. 30 is the upper limit once again it repeats. 30 to 40, 40 to 50 and 50 to 60. Therefore, this type of class interval we call it as exclusive class interval and we shall get into the tally marks and calculate the frequency. First score is 42. Where does this 42 lie? It lies between 40 and 50. So we shall put a tally. Next score is 22. It lies between 20 and 30. So we have to put a tally between 20 and 30 in tally marks column. Next is 55. It lies between 50 and 60. We have to put a tally mark with the tally marks column between 50 to 60. If you repeat the procedure in the same way, this is the frequency distribution table we get and this is the tally marks we get. Now take the total of the tally marks. For each class interval, we get the frequency in this way. That is between 10 to 20, the frequency is 8. Between 20 to 30, the frequency is 10. Between 30 to 40, the frequency is 8. Between 40 to 50, the frequency is 8. Between 50 to 60, the frequency is 6. And total frequency. What do you call the total frequency as? You are exactly right. It is sigma f or capital N. It is 40. Now we shall answer the questions. Yes. The largest number of scores lie between 20 and 30. It is 10. Look at all the frequencies. Which has larger frequency? It is between 20 to 30. Therefore, we have answered the first question that lies between 20 to 30. Second question is, in which class intervals are scores 10, 20 and 30 are included? Yes. The scores 10, 20 and 30 are included respectively in the following class intervals. Between 10 and 20, 10 is included. Between 20 and 30, 20 is included. Between 30 and 40, 30 is included. Now we have to calculate the range of the scores. We know that range of the scores is nothing but highest score minus lowest score. Highest is, you are exactly right, 59 and the lowest is 10. What is the difference? 49. Therefore, range of this course is 49. Now, here is a problem for you to practice. The practice problem. The mark scored by 42 candidates in an examination out of 100 students is given below. So, the data is entered. We have to form a frequency distribution table for this. Prepare a frequency distribution table with a class size 10. Take the class intervals as 30 to 39, 40 to 49, etc. and answer the following questions. Which class intervals have the highest and lowest frequency? Second question is, write the upper and lower limits if the class intervals is 30 to 39. Third question, what is the range of the given distribution? Now we shall get into the answers. Now we have to form the table. Yes, 30 to 39. Next, as given in the problem, we have to form the table for the class interval 40 to 49. So what type of class intervals are these? You are exactly right. It is inclusive class interval because the upper limit of the class interval does not repeat. Yes, sir. You can say the third class interval easily. What will be the third class interval? 50 to 59. Next will be 60 to 69. The next class interval 70 to 79. 
80 to 89 and 90 to 99 respectively. First you write all the class intervals. Now we shall get into tally. Now one will tell the scores, another will form the tally. 75. Yes sir, it lies between 70 and 79. Put a tally mark on the tally marks column between 70 to 79. Next one will be 65. Where does 65 lie? You are exactly right. It lies between 60 and 69. Next one will be 57. Where does this 57 lie? Between 50 and 59. So put a tally mark between 50 and 59. 32. Where does this lie? Between 30 and 39. So this is inclusive class interval. You can take the lower limit as well as the upper limit, both the numbers under tally marks. So continue the process and these are the tallies you obtain and take the total of each class interval tallies, you will get the frequency. So between 30 to 39, the frequency will be 4. Between 40 to 49, yes, the scores are 16. Between 50 to 59, the scores are 7. Between 60 to 69, the scores are 6. Whereas between 70 to 79, 5, 80 to 89, 3, 90 to 99, 1. Children, we shall take the total of all the frequency. What do you call the total of all the frequency as? Sigma F or capital N. What is it equal to here? 42. Now we shall answer all the questions. The first question is, which class intervals have the highest and lowest frequency? Yes, among the frequencies, the highest frequency is 16. Yes, that corresponds to the class interval 40 to 49. Whereas the lowest is 1, that corresponds to the class interval 90 to 99. So we have answered the first question. Now we shall take up the class interval 30 and 39. In that, we have to subtract 0.5 from the lower limit. That is 30 minus 0.5, it will be 29.5. In the upper limit 39, we have to add 0.5, then it will be 39.5. So in the lower limit 7.5, in the upper limit add 0.5. Now we shall get into the range. What is range? Yes, you know it is highest score minus lowest score. The highest score is 97 in the data and the lowest is 32 in the data. So the difference of these two is 65 and this is the range. Children, so far we have studied about the basic terminologies and about frequency distribution for both ungrouped and grouped data. Good luck. Thank you.